Okay, it's time to take the third assessment of the semester over solving linear equations. Okay, all these you're attempting to solve for the x variable. This is the only x I see. It doesn't have a multiplier, so I have to unadd the negative 10, so I would add 10, add 10, and x equals 18. Here is the only x I have. It is being multiplied by negative 3. There's no adding or subtracting, so it's just dividing by negative 3. 42 divided by negative 3 is negative 14. Okay, this is the only x I have. It is being multiplied by a negative, because we want to plus negative that, negative 5. Now there's an 8 we have to unadd first, so minus 8, minus 8. 13 minus 8 is 5. Then negative 5x. Then divide both sides by negative 5. And x equals negative 1, or negative 1 equals x, something. Okay, now here there are two x variables. They're on the same side. Okay, so they're on the same side. So if they're on the same side, we draw our little adding triangle and write the word add. Now that 8 being a minus means it needs to be negative 8. Okay, don't forget that. 5 plus negative 8 would be negative 3x. Now we also have a subtraction of 16 equals negative 10. So now there's only a, x appears only once. It's being multiplied by negative 3, so I have to unadd the 16, un minus the 16 by adding. So negative 3x. And then negative 10 plus 16 is positive 6. Then I unmultiply the negative 3 by dividing. And I get negative 2 as my solution. Okay, now the next one we have a parentheses we need to distribute. So that's a 1x and that's a negative 3 plus negative. Now distribute your negative 5. So negative 5 times 1x is negative 5x. And then negative 5 times negative 3 is 15. I don't have anything else. I put equals negative 25. Okay, now here's my x only appears once. It's being multiplied by negative 5. So I have to unadd the plus 15. Okay, so negative 5x. Negative 5, 25, take away 15. It's like a number line. If you're at negative 25 and you move 15 further out towards the left, it ends up at negative 40. And then I divide by negative 5, and x equals 8. Okay, in the next equation, we have to first get rid of these parentheses. So 7 times 1x, 7 times 3. It's going to give me 7x plus 21. And then I can write equals, but I have to distribute on the other side. Now that 3 is a negative, so remember it's negative. So 6 times 1x is 6x. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Now this time the x variable appears twice Okay, in the equation. So since it appears twice, it's on opposite sides. So we can't do what we did here where we added it, okay? Opposite sides. So my 6x here, I'm going to get rid of this one, okay? It's positive, so I'm going un, un, to subtract it with my 7x. So that gives me 1x plus 21 equals negative 18. Now here's x. It's being multiplied by 1. So I have to unadd the 21. That gives me negative 39. Now you don't really have to unmultiply a 1. That is pretty much your answer. You can divide by 1 if you'd like, but that's the answer. Okay, now my next problem. Again, we have parentheses. So that's a 1 and that minus plus negative. So distribute the negative 2. So negative 2 times 1x is negative 2x. And then negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And then over here you got negative 2x plus 6. Now you got x appearing twice. They're on the opposite sides, but they're the exact same. So that allows me to cancel them. And 6 is equal to 6, so that is all solutions.
for the x variable. x can be any value and this side equals this side. Okay, now in our next problem, we have to distribute. Remember that 3 is a negative 3 to 3x into 2. So on this side, we got negative 3x minus 4. On this side, we're going to have negative 3 times 3x. That's going to be negative 9x. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Now, we also have to add the 6x that was in there. Well, now I have three different, x appears three times. So when it appears three times, the x's that are on the same side, we want to add those together. So I have negative 3x minus 4. Then I add these two. Negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3. Negative 3x. And then remember to add your negative 6. Okay, now we got x on opposite sides, but they're the same, so they can be canceled. I don't need to balance like I did here. Negative 4 is not equal to negative 6. That is a no solution. Okay, now here I want to change something to this problem. I want to make that a plus. Okay. 7 plus x divided by 4. So x appears once in the equation. It's not being multiplied, but it's being divided. So first I have to unadd the 7 by subtracting 7. So I have x divided by 4. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. Then to unmultiply a 4, undivide a 4, we just multiply by 4 here to get rid of it, then multiply by 4 here. And x is negative 4. Okay, then on the other side, x only appears once. It's being multiplied by negative 4 and being divided by 5. Okay, there's nothing being added or subtracted to it, so I don't need to unadd or subtract, unadd or unsubtract anything. But I do need to first undivide, so that's easy. You just cross out the 5 and multiply it to the other side. So now I have negative 4 times x. 20 times 5 is 100. Now we need to unmultiply the 4 by dividing. There's no plus or minus in the equation. 100 divided by negative 4 is negative 25. Okay, now we have a couple story problems. Some college friends rent an apartment. They have to pay the landlord a $500 security deposit. Rent is $1,100 each month. If the tenants give the landlord $2,800, how many months did they pay for it in rent? So I'm finding months, but we've also got money. There's two units here, okay? So months is the answer, but then there's also money to go with it. So X is months, Y is money. So it's per month. And it would be dollars per month. Now, the dollars per month, each and per, mean the same thing. I know that that's 1,100. $1, okay, and we do have a previous amount, an initial amount of $500. So let's make our line. Okay. Now, I'm going to start something new here. I'm going to put B, if we know there's an initial amount of money, plus MXY. So we all know that the M is $1,100. Now the B is your prior amount, but we know how much that is. We know it's $500. Okay. So that's going to be my equation. Pretty easy. Okay. So we have 500 plus 1100X equals Y. Okay. And then my. Um, $2,800 goes into the equation for the appropriate variable. Now, money's Y, so that goes in for the Y. So 500 plus 1,100X equals 2,800. So here's my X. It's being multiplied by 1,100. First, I have to unadd the 500 by subtracting. So 1,100X equals 2,300. Then I divide by 1,100, and that's going to be a decimal, but that's okay. So 2,300 divided by 1,100, I got basically 2, OK? 
Okay, so two and a little bit more. So two months in rent. Okay, now for my next one. Pristine printing will charge a $15 setup and print business cards for $0.10 cents each. The printing place has no setup charge but offers business cards for $0.25 cents each. What number of cards costs the same amount from each printer? So we're finding the cards. So cards is a unit, but so is dollars. So whatever I'm buying is X, and then money is Y. Remember, time is always X, but if there's not a time, whatever, if it's a money problem, then whatever I'm buying is X and money's the Y because money is dependent on how many cards. So per card, dollars per card. Now we have two different ones. We have 10 cents, 0 0.10, and there's another 0 0.25. Now those are for different places. It's either one or the other. So what we do then is make two lines. So B, M, X, Y, and then B, MXY. Remember, these are pluses. So we know our M is 10 cents here, 0 0.10, and we know our M here is 0 0.25. Okay, now prior to the 10 cents, we had an initial amount of money. B is always the same label as the Y. Okay, we have a $15 amount. Okay, now prior to 25 cents, we had no initial amount because it says there's no setup, so that's a zero. But we still need to write an equation because this one did have an initial amount. And I want to know when these are equal. So I'm going to put equal question mark. So I don't worry about the y's. I want to find out after how many x's are equal. So 15 plus 0.10x, I want to know when that's equal to, I don't need the zero, I just need the 0.25x. Okay, now you got x appearing twice in the equation. They're on opposite sides, so we need to use the addition or subtraction. We can't just add them. Okay, let's, um, we don't want to get rid of this one because then there's nothing with it. But over here, I'm going to unadd the, the whole x term here. Okay, so we have 15, so 0 0.25 minus 0 0.10 is 0.15x. Okay, then I divide each side by 0 0.15, and that's my solution. So 15 divided by 0 0.15 is 100. So it's going to take 100 cards for the cost to be equal. Anything under 100, we wouldn't pay the setup fee. Anything over 100, it would be worth me paying. It. 